on my way to Nepal, I flew through Bangkok, Bangkok, Thailand, and I spent a few days in Thailand before I actually went back to the States. And it was so funny because I, I, I had a, uh, a, a hierarchy of realizations. When I was in Kathmandu, I thought to myself, wow, this place is filthy disgusting so gross it is if you've ever been there unless they've improved in the past few years but then I went to Thailand and I was like whoa it's so clean here it was not very clean but my standard was standards were just so out of whack and then I flew to LA and I was like whoa it's so clean here and you know when you go to LA and you remark about how clean it is that's when you know you, you've you've been gone for a little while and wow, I got so thin because I was so th sick all the time. Uh, but you know, I was happy, full of joy. That's what matters. But I had a great beard. Oh, it was great. Well, in Thailand, uh, I got also a few black market things because after all, I'm a guy and I have to get something like a, you know, a bootleg hard drive or something like that just for a couple bucks. Uh, nothing super super illegal like hardcore drugs or something like that but I did for the first time have alcohol when I was there that is legally and I was on the plane flying over there and this this lady kind of came up to me and was like oh, oh would you like some cognac and she had a little cup on a tray everything is served on trays in Thailand it's like the land of little trays I don't get it and I was like uh, well, what, what's, what's the drinking age? And she's like, uh, 18, sir. She's very polite. And I was like, cool, I'm, I'm 19. And uh, so I had cognac for the first time ever. And I just felt so grown up. Wow. Uh, and it was really good too. I, I, I kind of like cognac. <laughs> uh, first time ever, starting young. Although the Europeans would probably be like, you think that's starting young. Huh. I started when I was 10, but anyway. Uh, one of the other things that I got in Thailand was a custom-made full-piece camouflage tuxedo. Oh, wow, Bo, are you really going to spend money on something like that? Absolutely. So I showed up to this, this little place because they can... They can uh, tailor things just within 24 hours, which they did, and had it delivered at my hotel room, which was kind of scary. It's like, knock, 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 hey, you know this suit that you got measured for 24 hours before? Here it is. Yeah. I hope that they treat the people there handsomely. Uh, that is the tailors. Uh, th yeah, they probably have some sweatshop somewhere, so I felt kind of bad about that, but what can you do when you want to order a tuxedo and uh, you can't overanalyze everything. But anyway, enough about feeling guilty. The tuxedo itself was really, really well made. And it still is to this day the most comfortable thing I have ever slipped my little naked body into. It is a silk tuxedo, but it's camouflage. But not just normal camouflage. No, of course not. Urban camouflage. You know, kind of that blue, white, gray colored camouflage. Yeah, so cool. They even made me some ties for free. And uh, I also got a red tie there. Believe it or not, it's extremely hard to find just solid colored ties. It is. You go into Nordstrom and they're all like striped and polka dot. And I was like, come on, I just want a normal tie. So guess where I got a tie? In Thailand. That wasn't supposed to be a joke originally. <laughs> but... I inadvertently just said something very clever. I got the tie in Thailand. I got several ties in Thailand. <laughs> Where else would you get ties? <laughs> All right, so anyway, great place to get all sorts of Christmas presents or presents for yourself. And uh, uh, so interesting how skilled they are in just making a tuxedo like that. Really, really cool. I love that place. I'd like to go back and get another tuxedo. Maybe I could sleep in it. It's that comfortable.